Holy Spirit. And blessed be thy kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty oh, God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord.
a reading from the book of Romans. <clears throat> oh, no, excuse me, oh, no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in the word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake and sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we become believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desire. The word of the Lord. so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. darkness vanish away. See in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. <clears throat> Gather us in God that we may hear your word and know you and love you and follow you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Gather us in like the first. 
first day of school, right? <laughs> Gather us in with our backpacks. Thank you, Harrison. <laughs> I'm borrowing a backpack. But later in the service, we're going to bless our backpacks and planners, but Gather us in with our newly sharpened pencils and our hopes and our excitement and our reunion. Like being back in the classroom of community here this day. And from our Gospel, Matthew, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Where two or three are gathered, I am in the midst of you. Here we are gathered, two or three or however many, and you are beautiful, this day is beautiful, and the promise of Jesus' promise with us here is beautiful. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing us here, your people, your church, your children. Your music, festival, on the music and a little bit we'll start smelling the grill the things that are the, the, the smells from the grill it's all so beautiful where two or three are gathered I am in the midst of you what a lovely phrase and it comes to us kind of in time as a, as a lovely understanding of Jesus with us and yet Yet, if we look at the context for these words, this promise of Jesus being with us when we gather two or three, or however many, this, this promise of Jesus in Matthew's Gospel is made at a strange time in the life of this gathered group that Matthew writes about. Maybe not so strange, actually. It comes at a time of conflict. At a time when there is like an intervention that's needed, where Matthew lays out this kind of whole judicial process. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the, when the two of you are alone. And Matthew goes on to describe kind of this legal kind of process, this judicial process to deal with a fracture within the community. So, and yet, and even the larger context of Matthew in this Matthew chapter 18, what comes before this um, passage this morning is again addressed to the church about being humble, humility, becoming like a child because it's the child who will enter the kingdom. So be like a child in your humility. So you've got teachings on humility, on this judicial thing around conflict and division and hardship within community. And the next week, Matthew will talk to us about forgiveness. Forgiving not seven times, but 77 times. So in a way, here we are with these new backpacks and this new kind of classroom of the church. Um, being told how to pattern our lives as community, in community. And I think about teachers returning to classrooms and other people who serve our children in schools and how, you know, honestly, what I often hear is that one of the things that teachers have to do mostly is deal with behavior and bullying and conflict and challenges and all the emotional complexities of what children bring to the classroom, what we all bring to the classroom, as it were. And in the midst of that conflict, division, challenge, pain, the promise from Jesus, where two or three are gathered, I will be in your midst. I'm going to tell a story that in some ways to me still is a little bit unbelievable. Many years ago, freshly out of kind of priest school, <laughs> in an early position in a parish, I met a woman, who, a parishioner who I will call Sarah. And almost everyone who knew Sarah knew at least two things about her. One, that she was faithful, dogged servant of God. She was always at church 
not just doing, you know, she was like really engaged in the life of serving the church and the larger community, particularly passionate about feeding people who were hungry. And the second thing that almost everyone who would meet Sarah would know was that she was, that she was carrying an, enorm an enormous amount of pain. Her grief was all, was just a part of her being. And she shared her story with me as she shared with anyone, everyone, was that she had lost, her son had died. Her adult son who had a disability had died. And she carried this around um, and she would tell the story about this. As an adult, um, he was living in a group home and uh, there was an outing to a swimming pool. And um, he was in the pool and the lifeguard was negligent. And he died. And so Sarah, this is, I mean, I, it's unimaginable. For any of us. We don't want to think about what it means to lose someone, but particularly a child, one's own child. So sometime later, I don't know, it might have been a year or two later after learning her story, I was at some retreat here in the Twin Cities. I don't even remember what the retreat was, but at some point, I didn't know anyone at the retreat, and at some point we were invited to do some deep reflecting and, and then sharing within the group. And I remember a woman stood up, and her, I'll call her Jane, and she stood up and it was clear that she was carrying something that she needed to make some sort of a confession. That's what I ended up thinking of it as. And she stood up and she said, one day I was a lifeguard at a pool. And I just thought, wow, how could this be? And she went on to tell the story. So eventually I spoke with each of them separately, the mother, the lifeguard, all suffering, both suffering, layers of suffering, and asked, invited, would you, could you, might we sit down, the three of us? And eventually we found a day and a time and we sat in my office and they talked and they listened. And I'd like to report that all was said and all was healed and all was forgiven. And yet life is not so simple and easy as that. And yet where two or three are gathered, I will be in the midst of you. Anglican Archbishop Desmond Tutu modeled this kind of church too. After the horrors of South Africa apartheid, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, with this beautiful bishop's leadership, gathered victims of gross, unimaginable human rights, of uh, human rights violations, and gathered these victims and invited them to give their statements about their experiences. And likewise, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission invited the perpetrators of violence to give their testimony. And again, hard, but not simple. It's not so, and, and, and Bishop Tutu is, he, he um, I offer his quote, Forgiving and being reconciled to our enemies or our loved ones are not about pretending that things are, are other than they are. It is not about patting one another on the back and turning a blind eye to the wrong. True reconciliation exposes the awfulness, the abuse, the hurt, the truth. It could even make, sometimes make things worse. It is a risky undertaking, but in the end, it is worthwhile because in the end, only an, an honest confrontation with reality can bring real healing. Superficial reconciliation can bring only superficial healing. 
Where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in the midst of them. We gather this day, new light is streaming, new hopes. We gather at a time um, where we are, um, we, are, we are confronted by these hard teachings in Matthew that are really, really hard to, it's hard to live into this, this understanding of God's justice and God's mercy. Seeking to restore, to offer care in the spirit of humility. I will say, I just have to say that sometimes it's not okay for people to come together because sometimes there are such strong, there's such strong victimization that it's, it's, um, it's not, we have to, there needs to be more protection. I, I want to say that. And yet, as we gather in this time of coming back together as a church in this classroom of Christ, we gather with our backpacks, remembering kind of the foundational pieces of what it means to gather in community. We remember the, fu the fundamentals. I want to acknowledge, and, we, and I'm stating the obvious, that we live in hard times. We live in really hard times of great grief, um, of great division, um, of great hardship, of uh, despair. Um, it's not unlike the classroom of, this, of our children is maybe a microcosm of some of this, of d disparity. Um, it is a hard time. And yet we gather in that remembering that a Christ who promises amidst the conflict, amid, amidst the division, amidst too much grief, personal grief, communal grief, global grief, that Christ is there, that Jesus is present, that Jesus is present where two or three are gathered. Fundamentals are here. Mercy, healing, reconciliation, new life, hope. We go, we come here to remember that we are to carry ourselves and our backpacks into the world, into our personal lives, into our jobs, into our places of difficulty and pain, of hardship. Remembering that Jesus is right there in our very midst. I am there. I am there. In fact, I go all the way to the cross. Gather us in, Lord Jesus. Gather us in in our pain and our suffering. Gather us in in our grief. Gather us in in our division, our political, the political craziness we live in. Gather us in, Lord Jesus Christ, you who seek healing, truth-telling, reconciliation, mercy, love. Help us to be instruments of your peace. All this I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, your From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, we are inside us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope. <laughs> to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn.
is now ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and all who love him. It is the table of sharing with the poor of the world with whom Jesus identified himself. It is the table of communion with the earth in which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often and you who have not been for a while. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him.
bless these things now. So I invite you to stand. Remembering that when we go from this place, Christ is with us everywhere we go. Let us pray. Lord Christ, yours is the knowledge that made the world in its ways, and in your death and resurrection, the loving way of wisdom is fully revealed. Bless these backpacks, planners, briefcases, computers. Bless the people who carry them. Protect students, teachers, and all who work in our schools. Keep them from all harm as they enter a new school year. Protect each one of us in our daily life and work. Grant us patience, kindness, and confidence as image bearers of the one true God. May we come to love you with all our heart, our soul, and mind, and love our neighbors as ourselves. In the power of the Holy Spirit, who knows and inspires all things. Amen. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us along the way. So make haste to love, be quick to be kind, and the God's compassion will go with you. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day, and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.
us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.